the Whatcom Conservation District um, is has been doing this for you know since 1946 in Whatcom County, supporting landowners like you with their conservation choices. So really doing um, doing it through a lot of different ways too. So this is an example of one of our education opportunities that we offer, but we also have programs that touch on wildfire preparedness. We have a stormwater readiness program. We have our farm planning program, which is mainly what we're gonna be talking about this evening. Um, and we also have our riparian habitat programs as well. But, but specifically, our mission is to form partnerships with Whatcom County residents and entities to advance resilience and ecological processes on working lands, residential landscapes, waterways, open spaces, and open spaces for current and future generations. So that is the mission of the district. We are one of 45 in the state, over 3,000 nationwide. Most counties have a conservation district, and they do similar things, but not necessarily. Some districts have over 50 staff and are running intensive urban gardening programs and others have like two staff and they're able to support you know some some farmers and and that's about it so there's really a very big range of what conservation districts can do locally but all of them are dedicated to supporting folks like you in a voluntary manner that you can help steward your land and protect and balance that ecological integrity with the economic viability of your land, and that's really what we what we focus on. Um, I'm here with other people from the conservation district. Trevor, who's documenting today, so that folks who weren't able to make it here tonight can still get those uh, funny opportunities. And then Anna. She'll be coming in here in a second. These are both of our farm planners for the district. So get to know them. They have all of these resources in their back pocket that they can pull out at any time if you're looking for grants, if you're looking for, for different funding. Uh, let's see, what else was I meaning to talk about? Um, right, so this is part of our farm speaker series and we have one more uh, winter readiness that's going to be happening on october 4th um, and that's going to be on farm so we have that information too at our booth here um, and as part i'm part of the education and outreach team so we're also in schools we teach watershed health we take students on farm tours um, and what i realized is there, that Sustainable Connections is not here tonight. That's one of the agencies that's missing. And this weekend on, I think Saturday and Sunday, is their farm tour. So um, we have one of the flyers out for that, but that's another great way to meet with farmers that many of whom have gotten support from the agencies and organizations that are here tonight. So that's just a, a shout out to an opportunity to actually see some of these projects in person. And one of those is alluvial farms. Um, they raid pastured pork and hemp out um, on the Goodwin Road, uh, kind of by Emerson, and by Cloud Mountain Farm. And they have a riparian restoration project and a big composting facility that we have supported them in funding. So just a, a shout out to that if you want to see some of these things in person. Okay, so. Next up, let me grab our agenda. So you'll see that around the room there are tables with happy, wonderful people that are interested in supporting everything that you do. And so what we're going to do is basically go through your pamphlet that you have that looks like this. And some of the organizations aren't here today, which is unfortunate, but many of them are. And so those that aren't here, talk to the Conservation District if you want more information about them, and we can get you on a mailing list or send some more information. Um, but here tonight, and that, that we'll be talking specifically, is going to be, so we have us first, number one, Walking Conservation District, and then we will have NRCS, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, we have Farm Service Agency, we have Spark Northwest, um, we have Whatcom County with the Conservation Easement Program, we'll have WSDA, Regional Markets, we have the Farm Fund through the Food Co-op, 
We have Nooksack Salmon Enhancement Association and the Whatcom Food System, Whatcom County Food System. So all of those organizations are going to be getting up in front, telling you what they have to offer, um, and then you'll be able to connect with them more specifically. So I'm just going to start out. Oh, actually, I was going to point out Anna. She wasn't. She wasn't in the room before. This is Anna. She actually coordinated most of this event. I just get to stand up and do the talking. <laughs> um, yes, she did a great job. And um, Anna is one of our planners here at the district. So we're going to start out Walking Conservation District. We're just going to we're going to start right off the bat. Um, so we have a couple. We have many many different programs, but our small farm cost share program. Um, so many of the organizations tonight might talk about the term cost share, um, which means that you as a landowner are putting up um, at least a portion of the cost of the project and then the organization is able to then match that or more. Um, in this case, we have our small farm cost share is up to 75% of the total cost of the project, up to $3,000, so a $4,000 project you put in a grand and we would be able to find support for about three thousand dollars more right and um, so some of these projects well all of these projects are for best management practices so again we're trying to really enhance the ecological integrity of your land so BMPs that would be um, under this specific the far, small farm cost share would be things like manure storage and fencing and heavy use areas and gutters and downspouts um, bigger um, projects like that that you might in your farm need to help support you in the winter months to help prevent any runoff or um, manage mud on your farms um, and program eligibility so that's going to be our coastal watersheds so we also have, um, along with that small farm cost share, is we have a $300 rebate program that we use in partnership with um, Whatcom County. So for smaller projects, so you're just needing some more hot fuel, you need some more gravels, you're looking for to put in some temporary fencing, smaller scale BMPs, um, gutters and downspouts, for $300, you have attended this workshop, so that means immediately that you are eligible for that rebate, and you'll be submitting um, your receipts, and you get a check in the mail for that. As, as long as you're, you know, you're meeting with our conservation district staff, and they're approving that um, that project. So then, going down that list, we've got our Washington State Conservation Commission cost share again. 75% of the project, these are bigger BMPs, these are going to be on larger farms, um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's offered on a rolling basis, but these projects need to happen in a pretty quick time frame, like within the next year, um, or actually June 2025, so we've got, a, we've got two years on those, but it's all focused on improving water quality in those spaces. Um, the Conservation District, kind of switching gears, we have equipment rentals, we have a manure spreader um, that is ground driven. We have a no-till seed drill. We have a small scale poultry processing unit. And those things, are, it's a very low cost um, rent for us. You reserve them on a calendar. And um, we bring out the cedar and the manure spreader to your property. The poultry processing equipment you can pick up from our office. Glad to talk to anybody about that. We also have a fish passage barrier removal, this is just such a hard one to say, fish passage barrier removal program where if you have um, a driveway or access lane on your property that is going over a creek and that creek may or may not have salmon in it or any sort of fish, um, we're able to fund those projects to take out a culvert, replace a culvert, fix it with a bridge, etc. Um, and actually Nooksack Salmon Enhancement, we'll talk a little bit about that too, because we partner with them on a lot of those. And it's a free assessment for that. And then our salmon recovery funding. So anybody who lives on a stream, a creek, a ditch, that has the potential to be a fish bearing stream, we would love to meet with you to do an assessment on how we can help fund the riparian enhancement of that area. So um, that 
might be through a variety of different programs that we have going right now. Um, and that's, you know, these are sort of on a rolling basis, so you get a free assessment, and then depending on whether your property fits certain guidelines, we can put you into different programs. So there's a lot of opportunities for anybody here that has a fish bearing stream. And again, with Tech Sam Enhancement, we'll talk about that in more depth as well. Okay. Oh, I had one more that isn't on there because it's not necessarily farm related, but it kind of is, is we have um, water use efficiency rebates going on right now for residential homes anywhere in Whatcom County outside of the city of Bellingham. So as, as long as you're not in the city of Bellingham, um, you can get $100 off of a high efficiency toilet or a clothes washer and then irrigation controllers, um, water sense irrigation controllers, which are, you get $75 off of those. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. So we're going to go down the list. So the next group that's going to be up is NRCS with the amazing Joy Holly, she, who has been doing this for how many years? 18, 18 years. <laughs> She's an expert. So food. Yeah, yeah. Are you good? Yeah, come on in. Because then you get to hold this annoying thing. I know. <laughs> Okay, so I am Joy Holly, and this is the Denki, and we're a plant, uh, soil conservationist with the Natural Resources Conservation District. And EQIP is the name of our funding opportunity. It's um, Environmental Quality Incentive Program, and it's our flagship conservation program that helps farmers and ranchers and forest landowners integrate conservation into working lands. And we do much the same as, as the Whatcom Conservation District. The diff one of the differences is that we, they have a cap at 75,000, our cap is 450,000. And um, we, <clears throat> we fund projects primarily with the dairies, but having to do with um, waste manure management, waste management, that type of thing. <clears throat> so that would in, involve, um, you know, we storage ponds, you'd call them lagoons. And um, then we also have irrigation upgrades, forest management, erosion control, anything that will help you address a resource concern that you have on your, on your property. <coughs> so if this, if this sounds like something that you're interested in, I have some questions for you now. So. This might be a good fit for your operation if you own or rent and manage land for agriculture or forest production. So that could be cropland, rangeland, or forest land. <clears throat> and you have to have control of the land, such as through your own ownership or a lease. And can you provide irrigation history if you are interested in something to do with, with the irrigation? Um, is your land, does your land comply with highly erodible land and wetland conservation determination, which is provided by my cohort there uh, with Farm Service Agency. And you also need to establish updated farm records with the Farm Service Agency. You need to have a, either a social security number or some kind of employer identification. And here's, here's the one that might be hard for you guys to to me, but you can't make over $900,000. <laughs> and, and then you can be a member of an entity or a joint operation yeah, as long as you're making the business uh, the management decisions. So, um, one of the very um, interesting uh, practices that people are, well, that people are mostly interested in is a high tunnel. So if you're interested in that, you can come see us. So I'm with the Farm Service Agency, one of the many branches of USDA. We have a loan side and a program side. Um, so for the loan side, we do operating loans. There's ownership loans up to $600,000. Um, it's usually 3% interest rate for those. The basic requirements are usually three years of farming experience um, and then being turned down through conventional bank lending. We also have uh, micro loans, which only go up to fifty thousand, but it's a much easier paperwork process. It'd be helpful if you told us what page you're on. I know. I was just oh, thinking that. Okay. So, so 
I realize that USDA Rural Development <laughs> isn't here on page two, so now she is all of page three. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Okay, and we also do youth loans. Um, if kids need the experience getting a loan, if they have like a 4-H project, we, those are up to $5,000. Uh, Darcy Maldonado is our farm loan manager, so her contact info is on here for anyone interested in our loans. I'm on the program side where we cover mostly price support and disaster type programs, a pretty wide variety. Uh, we have the organic certification cost share program where we help pay the fees for that. Uh, people who certify through the state, the state handles those, uh, but Oregon Tilt and the other certifiers, we can help with that cost share. We also have a food safety certification program um, for anyone developing a food safety plan and for soil and water testing. Uh, some of our disaster type programs we're currently hit a stage of drought, so we have lots of livestock programs available. One for grazing livestock on non-irrigated grazing pasture, um, and also for additional costs with hauling feed over 25 miles due to the drought. Uh, that program also covers anyone with honeybees, if they have loss from that, from the colony collapse or various disasters. Uh, let's see, so many. We also have the tree assistance program, which will also cover, we usually do it for berries, blueberries or raspberries, also nursery crops. That would be if from some weather disaster, at least 18% of the crop dies, then we help buy the plants to replace those and help with planting costs. We also have a program uh, if crop insurance isn't offered in the county for crops that you grow, uh, raspberries as an example, or apples, uh, lots of small vegetable crops. We have our own kind of insurance program. It's usually 325 for basic coverage for crop, but that can also be free if you're a beginning farmer, so less than 10 years of farming, or in any of our socially disadvantaged farmer categories. Uh, let's see. What's a socially disadvantaged farmer? Um, they consider women. Uh, <laughs> I have a list somewhere over here. Lots of different groups. Uh, we also, the beginning farmers and the veterans fall into that where there's no fee for our basic coverage. So, and since it's on here, we also have some conservation type programs. CREP is one of those where we uh, if someone's near a CREP eligible stream, we can help pay to install a riparian buffer. And we also have a wetlands buffer type program. And I think that's a brief yeah, <laughs> it's rundown of There's everything. a lot there's of a different lot. programs. Awesome, okay. Thank you, so that was um, Farm Service Agency. So now we're gonna be skipping ahead to Spark Northwest. Who can find the page? Since I know I don't have it on me. Page five? Awesome. See, it's a group activity. And we have Mia. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mia Devine. I work for Spark Northwest. We're a nonprofit based in Seattle. And we work throughout Washington and Oregon. And I'm actually based in Everson at my farm property, so I work remotely from there. Um, and our mission is to work with communities to help transition to clean energy technologies, renewable energy and energy efficiency. Um, and I manage our rural energy program, which means I work with a lot of farmers and rural businesses to help them figure out what renewable energy technology might work best for their business um, and then apply for grants to fund it. And the primary grant that we help folks with is uh, through USDA, it's the REAP grant, Rural Energy for America program. Um, and again, it's through the USDA and it can cover 50% of a project cost. So if you want to install solar panels on your barn, if you want to do a bunch of energy efficiency improvements, lighting, a more efficient you know, walk-in cooler, uh, this USDA grant could pay 50% of the equipment, installation, everything. It used to be 25%. So through the Inflation Reduction Act, is, is currently 50%. Through September 2024 is when that is guaranteed to be 50%. After that, it might go back to 25%. So the next year is a good time to do it, if it is of interest to you at all. Um, and first steps are 
um, getting a quote um, for, you know, if you're interested in solar, get a solar quote. If you're interested in energy efficiency, Sustainable Connections in Bellingham offers really low cost energy audits uh, for businesses. So they'll come through, look at all of your equipment and make specific recommendations on how to save energy. And then we can take that, get quotes and apply for the grant to pay 50% of that. Um, and Spark Northwest, so I can help you by looking at your utility bills, kind of double checking energy savings and cost savings. I can help you look through quotes and understand any differences if you get multiple quotes. Um, and then I can actually help you with that REAP grant paperwork. I can fill out the forms for you. And I provide that service at no cost to farmers. We get funded by USDA. So my services are absolutely free. Um, next deadline is actually September 30th pretty late to apply for that, but the next one after that is December 31st. The deadlines are quarterly, um, so next one after that will be March 31st. Um, I also am co-owner of a farm in Everson Small Acres, and we have received a lot of grants that you're hearing about today, so if you want to talk to a farmer and figure out what the process is like from a farmer perspective, I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, we received the Value Added Producer Grant from USDA. Uh, farm fund grant that you'll hear about in a minute um, and then we are also going to be on the farm tour this Saturday um, so if you want to come and see our solar panels some of our energy efficiency improvements and we also have a wind turbine on the property so you're welcome to come and check all that out I think that's it awesome thank you I didn't realize you guys were on the farm tour this year yeah. that's perfect see it in see it in action um, great, so next up, you see we're kind of moving around the room here, um, Whatcom County's Conservation Easement Program. What page are we on? Five. We're still on five. <laughs> here you go. I need to grab one of these because I don't Hi, I'm Lauren. I am the Conservation Easement Program Administrator for Whatcom County. Some of you may know this as the Purchase of Development Rights Program or PDR Program. Um, we changed our name in 2020. But the program pretty much, Whatcom County will compensate you for your unused development rights in exchange for putting an agricultural conservation easement on your property. The goal of the program is to permanently preserve farmland um, from development and subdivision. Uh, the process, there's pretty much m nine major milestones. I have a list of all of them over there. And um, I'm here to help you through that whole process and Whatcom County will pay for any project related expenses. So there's an appraisal, survey, a um, lot of record determination, and I'm here to help you organize that as well as we'll cover those expenses. Um, eligibility would be having to be an agricultural, rural, rural residential, or rural forestry zoning, um, be at least one acre in size, and have unused development rights. So we generally will not be within urban um, growth areas as well. It has to be within county jurisdiction. So feel free to come by and talk with me. We also have CEP um, ambassadors, which are farmers that have been in the program that you can talk to as well. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so next up, page six, USDA regional markets. Um, we have Annette. She's got a lot of opportunities here. We're so glad you were able to make it. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, so I'm with Washington State Department of Agriculture Regional Markets Program. Um, I run our Farm to School program, but I'm going to be talking about some other new grant opportunities. Uh, the first one that's listed on this sheet is actually not us, <laughs> it's a USDA grant for meat processors. Um, something that we do within the regional markets program is try and share out grant, re grant uh, and funding opportunities even when they're not from our agency. Um, so this grant is currently open. Um, there's information about it. I know these are all hyperlinked. I also have a handout in the back with the information as well. Um, but this provides grants to help eligible processors expand their processing capacity, so addressing the bottleneck for small meat processing in the state. Um, there are lots of really great technical assistance resources around that. Um, so if you want informa information about connecting to those grant writers, let me know. Um, and then within our program, 
We have a new uh, local food system infrastructure grant. This will be the third year of funding um, by the state. It was initially funded last year at uh, around $17 million. Um, it's ongoing now at $8 million per biennium. Um, and in his, the first two years, we funded projects, small projects, up to $250,000, and large projects, um, up to a million dollars. The timeline on this is pretty quick. We're hoping to get applications, uh, the application open this October, so next month. Um, it's really designed for turnkey projects, so if you're, it's all post-harvest, really investing in local food supply chains and um, uh, infrastructure needed to expand for local markets. If you are thinking about a project like this, now is the time to start talking to, you know, find out what you need for permitting, um, building, if you want to do that type of um, infrastructure development. Uh, the most competitive projects are those that are really turnkey and ready to go. We received over 700 applications in the first round uh, two years ago, and or about a year ago, and we're only had funding for about 120. So it is competitive, but the good news is that it is ongoing, meaning that every two years now we'll receive $8 million from the state. So think of this grant as something that you can plan into your farm development. This might not be the right time, but think about how this grant could support um, your business next year, the year after, even two, three, or four or five years from now. Um, the Last grant I'm going to talk about is the Farm to School Purchasing Grant. This actually is not for farmers, but it represents a market opportunity for growers. Applications are open now. School districts apply for this funding that they can use to purchase local foods. We have a, quite a few school districts in the Whatcom County area um, that have received this grant in the past, representing pretty significant investment in local farm purchasing. So if you want more information about that, I can tell you how to connect um, to those market opportunities. Thank you. All right. So, um, so next up we have, as was alluded to before, the, what, the Community Food Co-ops Farm Fund. So, yeah, page seven. Awesome. Thank you. There we go. Awkward. Thanks. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Margaret Gerard. I'm the chair of the Farm Fund Committee at the Community Food Co-op. Figure out my microphone here. Um, so the Farm Fund, uh, there's three different programs. Um, we're funding a lot smaller increments than uh, some of these other grants. So we're doing closer to um, $1,000 to $5,000 grants. Um, we also have um, a loan program. Um, and so I'll just kind of go through the three separate options. Um, the Farm Fund grant is the, the smaller option, uh, one to $2,000. And this has typically been for um, collaborative projects, so projects that are benefiting more than one farm. Um, farmers markets have gotten this a lot, Twin Sisters Market and um, Meat Linden Farmers Market even. And, um, but projects that are multiple farms are gonna benefit from. Um, it, during COVID, that kind of shifted. Um, it was harder to collaborate. It was harder to find projects that multiple farms could benefit from. So it kind of shifted to be um, more for startup farms or just uh, immediate need, um, trying to figure out how to do online stuff or just all the things that COVID um, shook up with the, the market. And so in 2023, the Farm Fund took a pause. Um, so we're kind of in a revisioning phase right now. Um, will reopen the application this year. And so that that grant, that smaller pool, is kind of uh, in flux. We'll kind of see where the direction uh, will be focused this year. Um, and then our loan program is 3% loan uh, partner with ICU. Um, and that can be 500 to $12,000. Um, and that's, that's always open, so that's, uh, that's a really good option. And then the next step grant is for established farms that are looking to scale up to the wholesale market. Um, and one thing that the, it doesn't say on here, but it, that's a matching program. So that, say you have a $25,000 project, um, the farm fund, you could apply up to fi uh, a $5,000 
grant and then you would pay the other 20,000. So that program, we want to be seeing that, you, that your farm is invested in making the project happen uh, as well. Um, and it's, I think everybody here is from Whatcom, but the uh, farm fund, can, you can be farming in Skagit County, but you have to be supplying Whatcom County. Um, I think, I guess that goes for, even if you're growing in Whatcom County, you, we want to be, the farm fund is wanting to support farmers selling in Whatcom County. So local food, um, you don't have to be certified organic, but we are wanting to support more, um, you know, less chemical based farming and more uh, sustainable models. Um, I think that's probably all. And uh, so yeah, you can go, we have our website here and uh, just find more about the Farm Fund on the Community Food Co-op website. And we'll be reopening our funding this fall. So look for that. Did you say that your next step grant was a 25% matching grant? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And how small of a farm are these programs funding? Like, is there a minimum requirement for acreage on all of this? No, we've funded like a quarter acre before. So yeah, small dollars and small uh, farms too. Yeah, especially the the farm fund grant is for kind of smaller startup, and then the next step would be more kind of established wholesale. Yeah. And that's a great question overall. Oh, I'll take this. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're welcome. And I'll yeah, be back there if you want to talk more. Awesome. Um, so. All of, the, all of the different funding opportunities are sort of based at different scales. Um, but for, say, you know, our $3,000 um, cost share program, the grant that I talked about at the beginning, that could be really any scale. Um, but there's different requirements for each of the different programs. So um, as, you're, as you're going through and chatting with these folks later, you can ask them specifically around, around those pieces. Okay. So, awesome. We have Nooksack Salmon Enhancement Association that I've alluded to. We partner with them on a lot of different projects. We have Eli and James. There you go. Thanks. That was awkward. Hi, everyone. I'm James Vandervoort. I'm the Riparian Project Manager at Nooksack Salmon Enhancement Association. I'm Eli. I'm the uh, in-stream project manager. So we, let me make sure I got my notes. Uh, Next Act Salmon Enhancement is a community-based nonprofit organization. We're focused on reversing the trend of declining salmon runs in Whatcom County. Uh, yes, I did read that. It's a lot easier to do that. <laughs> um, we, you know, listening to a lot of these other folks talk, like, in the same sense, we don't provide funding opportunities to you as a farm owner. We would help secure funding from some of these other sources and other ones, and then we're the ones that would come in and we can help you use those funding sources. Um, Right, as a, and so the two, like we kind of represent the two facets of how we would help, uh, similar to some of these other programs. We can help with riparian restoration, so any salmon bearing stream or one that you know has effects that would then lead into a salmon bearing stream, we can come in and help with the restoration, planting native trees, plants, shrubs, uh, getting rid of invasives, and, and upgrading the system, right? And then I'll let Eli talk about his part of it. Um, yes. A little more of the. <laughs> in-stream part of it um, fish passage barriers which they talked about a little redundant we get a lot of our funding from NRCS and the conservation district we have a couple others we do have a couple other sources as well um, but almost all of that is to no cost it, I believe it's technically a cost share but to no cost uh, to remove or remove and replace a fish passage barrier um, we might be implementing a little more cost share uh, when it comes to utilities. Uh, Puget Sound Energy is god awfully expensive when you're dealing with them, <laughs> literally tens of thousands of dollars. Um, but besides that, uh, we can do it all and get funding to do it all. Uh, we also do some erosion control. So if you're having a problem with creek trying to go where you don't want it, we can also do some bioremediation, some fabric, plants, um, different things to help with uh, erosion. Um, and we also help with habitat. Uh, so large woody debris is part of the erosion as well. Also habitat, that's most, probably most of our habitat uh, is large woody debris, installing root wads, uh, some channel relocation, that kind of stuff. Um, little diversity, that kind of stuff. 
and that's about the in-stream end of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, roughly it's like you can go to them for funding and then they might send you to us. You could come to us and we might go to them for funding. Like it, it all kind of works together. Um, I think for us the separation would be like we can come in and help do the work as well. That's, that's kind of our role. Anytime there's salmon on the property, in the creek, anywhere near it, we, that's when we would come into play. Also, Pitch, there's a new program that you guys are launching this Saturday, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to you, maybe yes. not. Um, there's a citizen science program that Nooksack Salmon Enhancement is doing where it's called Salmon Spotters, and if you have a creek on your property that you think you may or may not have salmon in, you can volunteer to be a salmon spotter and then go out, I think they're asking for two days a week for 15 minutes. Um, that you would go out and look for salmon on your creek and just say nope or yep and take a picture if you can and it gives a better idea of the diversity of locations that the salmon might be in and the timing of when they're returning. We're already seeing pink salmon up in the upper forks of the Nooksack so um, that's pretty exciting and they'll be coming now until what November end of November? Depending um, on weather depending on weather, <laughs> hopefully we get some more rain. Um, but that's just another cool opportunity that Nooksack Salmon Enhancement is doing this year. And I am gonna be a salmon spotter. Yep. Can't wait. Coho are amazing. Cool. They're amazing. Salmon I can't, I can't wait. Expect. Yes, awesome, thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, um, okay, one more. We have Ellie Jensen with Whatcom County Food Systems. So we are on now on page 11. And we're gonna go through um, some of the ones that are missing from in person here in a moment. Hi everyone, thank you. I'm going to be very unpopular. I have no funding yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for many years, a group of uh, really smart people have been doing community food assessments of our food system here in Whatcom County specifically. Food system is anything that touches your food from farm to fork to waste. Um, and five years ago, the county council decided to have an advisory committee called the Food System Committee with a specific task of developing a food system plan for an equitable and sustainable food system in Whatcom County specifically. So I am the staff person for the Food System Committee. Trevor's on it, Margaret's on it, um, a lot of smart subject matter experts, and we've spent the past four years drafting this really great looking black and white food system plan um, that outlines goals, objectives, and actions for um, our food system here. And one of the goals in the plan is about creating a vibrant and local food economy. Um, and I would, there's some opportunities in there, there's some actions that specifically reference future funding and supporting funding for farmers and agricultural producers and fishermen in this county. Um, and tonight I'm really here to learn from you all kind of what kind of funding opportunities may be missing in this community and um, so please tell me I want to learn and hopefully uh, support that yep awesome. so future funding future funding yes <laughs> opportunities <laughs> through alley um, actually I'm gonna pass this over to Anna who's gonna talk through sort of the next steps and okay yeah. so there were some people who wanted to come but couldn't make it so I'm going to do my best, whoa, to not trip. <laughs> um, so to talk about some of my favorite highlights in here for them. Um, so one of those, uh, skipping, we talked about, so the septic maintenance rebate, if you have a septic um, department of health has rebates for that. Um, oh, sorry, page five. Um, so that's a Whatcom County program, and that's all on their website. It's pretty clear. Um, you can get extra assistance if you fall into a certain category. Um, there's Egg West Farm Credit. They have a new producer grant that I think just closed, but they do that every year. Um, so in addition, that's I'm moving on from that page uh, to what wasn't talked about a new WSDA program called the Compost Reimbursement Program run by someone else, not Annette, but I emailed him and he said, you can get on the list. It's not open yet, but come October, um, they'll have more information and you can get compost covered 50%. It has to be, page six, sorry. 
it has to be compost from a solid waste handling facility. So I think in our county that's really only GET. Think they have a map, but only one is on there, or two maybe. Um, but that will include spreading, transporting, and purchasing the compost. So if that's something you use a lot of, it could benefit you. And it's first come, first serve, because it's a new program. So get on that list. Um, I'm also going to skip up a little bit. There's the Tilth Alliance um, grant. Page eight. Um, so uh, this is a grant that they usually start around this time giving more details about. Um, this is also on their website. It goes up to $10,000. He said that they typically around the Tilth Conference um, Till the Lions Conference, like, give more details and formally announce it. So that's um, something to watch uh, if you fall under their eligible eligibility. Um, and he's accessible as a contact, um, Nathan Stacy. Uh, and then those other two grants are more very general, like, national. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail about them. Um, if anyone has gotten a Western Sarah grant, feel free to chime in. But I think those are kind of difficult. Um, so I think that's all. And then at the very back, there's incubator programs that are local, um, as well as information, uh, the very last page, along with Ali, who talked about food systems, um, is also the Ag Commission, and then also CPAL, which is run by Dakota Stranick, which is our acronym for conservation planning on agricultural lands. And so those aren't farm funding programs, but they're local contacts. So that's all that's in this form here. Um, I did create it. I'm happy to have feedback on how to make it better. Um, and online is where it's really helpful because you can actually click through all these hyperlinks. So you'll get that.